Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this blessed morning. We thank you for bringing us all here this morning. And as we go over our health portion, we ask that you may please help us to apply this to ourselves spiritually and see how it can help us in, in our journey with you. Help us, Lord, to be in good health in mind and body and spiritually. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so vegetable addition. The last time we went um, over these, when we begun these, I think a week or two ago, we went over kohlrabi and how beneficial that was for the body. We went over artichokes um, and that not many people know that artichokes is actually a flower, the flower bud. We also covered asparagus, which was number three. And number four was jicama. We covered um, number five, fennel. Oh, excuse me, number four, fennel. And we also, the last one we looked into was heart of palm. And does anyone remember where heart of palm are actually from? Amen, palm trees, just as their name indicates. So diversity in diet, why is that important? One of the main things about that we can derive from having our, having our diets diverse, especially in vegetables, which we'll be looking into, is a diverse diet gives, um, breeds a diverse microbiome. And we've covered the microbiome before, which is the gut bacteria. So our gut bacteria feeds on the plant fibers and things that we put into our body. That's why fiber is very important for our digestion. So the body, the the microbiome uses fiber as a source of food, as a source of nourishment. So we feed it and it in turn does things for us as helping us to digest our foods, helping us to um, convert certain things into, into energy. vitamins, hmm? energy. energy, converting it into energy, um, converting things like B12, um, helping us to have better nutrients, helping us to resist diseases and basically helping us overall. So the more diverse the microbiome is, the better it will be for the body. So research has linked our gut bacteria to how efficiently our body breaks down food, the health of our immune system, and even our brain functions. So in order to have a diverse gut, um, microbiome, because the microbiome actually is in the intestines, it's in the, the colon, that is where they reside. So when we, excuse me, so depending on the things that we eat, we have, it makes us have certain, certain gut bacteria. So having a diverse range of foods, having a diverse range of vegetables naturally means we'll have um, a more diverse microbiome and in turn be healthier. So that is, uh, just in a nutshell, the importance of having diversity in our diet. So number six. Oh, before I forget, one of the things um, I found in my research is that they found that people who had 30 or more, 30 or more different plant fibers, that's from fruit or vegetables in their diets, were found to be healthier. And so they had more um, diversity in their in their stool or in their microbiome. So 30 or more, it sounds like a lot of different plants and fruits to have in your diet. But if you look at it in terms of those things are coming from seasoning, they're coming from herbs. So just putting coriander is already one thing that you, if you're making say soup or something like that. So if the soup has carrots, potatoes, um, even parsley that you garnish, that's, all that ends up adding up. So over a week's time, if we eat properly, if we eat right, it can be relatively easy to get up to 30 different plant fibers or different diversity in your diet if we do it correctly. So number six is Napa cabbage. I'm sure everyone here is used to eating cabbage or has had cabbage at some point, but has anyone ever had Napa cabbage specifically? Nice. nice. So Napa cabbage is, is a type of Chinese cabbage that belongs to the cruciferous vegetable family. And as you'll find, most of these vegetables on here belong to the cruciferous or brassicae family. 
Contrary to what you may think, Napa cabbage is not does not originate from Napa Valley, California. In fact, it's actually named after the Japanese word vegetable leaves. But in Japan, it's called hagusai. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. So Napa cabbage is an excellent source of vitamin C, K, and antioxidants. It's rich in B vitamins and folate and vitamin A and C, and it can help create cells that ensure proper immune response. It can also be um, very good for cancer prevention, anti-inflammatory, and antimicrobial properties. So the flavor of cabbage is not, it is a more delicate flavor than your standard cabbage. So it is a bit more milder and can be sweeter when it's cooked. Um, it can be incorporated into different cultural dishes aside from Asian cuisine. It can be steamed, stir fried, fermented, as in kimchi. Uh, and it can also be used to replace lettuce or be incorporated into soups or stews or as a side dish. So if you're used to, say, getting lettuce all the time, one of the easiest way you can incorporate that is using it as a lettuce or using it in a stir fry as in a lo mein or sorts. So number seven, the rutabaga. Anyone ever had a rutabaga or heard of it? So the rutabaga, also called swede, is also in the brassica family and is a cross between a turnip and a cabbage. It is a rich source of potassium, as most vegetables. Just one medium size can give you 35% of your daily needs. It helps to improve um, enzyme function, do, um, enzymatic function. It is very effective against premature aging and stimulating healthy regeneration of cells throughout organs and tissues, and which can also range from oxidative stress um, in the body. It contains carotenoids, which are converted in the body to a form of vitamin A, which helps to improve and maintain <laughs> healthy vision. So these can be used um, in place of potatoes, it can be cut or diced into wedges depending on your um, or your desired needs. The leaves are also edible, much like other leafy vegetables such as spinach or chard, and they can be used, as I said, in place of potatoes. So they can be boiled, mashed, pureed, roasted, or eaten raw because they're um, not as starchy as potatoes. Hmm. It's a little bitter. Bit. I think. Yes, yes. Yes, the, it is a bit bitter when cooked. So turnips, and I have just an image right below that shows you even, they kind of look similar, but one is a bit lighter and smaller than the other, the turnip and the rutabaga. So a turnip is a root vegetable is commonly harvested in the spring and fall. It is cousin to kale, cauliflower, arugula, and cabbage, which all fall in the, the family of cruciferous. The most common turnip is a light purple and on top and white at the bottom, but there are more, are more than 30 kinds of varying shapes and colors. So turnips are actually really interesting in terms of their benefits. They are they protect against harmful bacteria, they provide anti-cancers and anti-inflammatory effects. They also were traditionally used to um, treat STIs, headaches, rheumatoid arthritis, and edema. They help um, with liver and kidney health. They improve eye health because they're rich in, in um, lutein, which is important for healthy eyes and warding off problems like macular degeneration and cataracts. They're rich in iron, very rich in iron, in fact, and vitamin C, which are both of the things that you need to help um, to have iron and to absorb it. So all that in just one vegetable. So it can be, you can see it can be very, um, very good for women. Turnips are described as being slightly bland and mildly sweet with a simple flavor that, um, that hints of potato. Their texture is crisp and crunchy like carrots and they can be incorporated in many different ways, boiled, steamed, grated raw, cooked, or even mashed. And below I just have some of the ways that it can be used with barley, um, and with beans, or 
or turning it um, or using it to make some, um, like a, a bean ball, like a meatball, bean ball, football, and such. So there's many different ways that it can be used. And, and researching these things, they, most of these vegetables, well, actually all of these vegetables that I have on here are fairly easy to get locally and they're not expensive at all. So number nine, horseradish. Horseradish is a root vegetable native to either Russia or Hungary. It's a member of the mustard family, which also includes kale, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts as um, stated with the rutabaga. Aside from the root, the leaves are also edible and can be consumed both raw and cooked. Um, you, some of you may have heard of horseradish being used um, to treat certain, to treat respiratory conditions. I believe there's, all, there's a recipe with it with pineapple and cayenne and things like that to take because it helps to clear mucus. That happens to be one of the benefits. It helps protect your body from cellular damage. And it also helps, it also helps to get rid of free radicals. And it's these free radicals that can cause um, oxidate, oxidation in the body and um, damaging the cells. It is antibacterial, supports the immune system. It alleviates pain from swollen joints or muscles by stimulating blood flow to the surface and beneath the skin. So this can be very good in treating swollen joints and muscle aches and things like that. Actually, it was used... Um, back then, it was used as a way to relieve from backache or back pain. So it can be grated and used as a poultice. It helps to improve circulation, clears mucus as, as stated. It is antibacterial um, and antibacterial and I believe antiviral as well because it can help to treat sinitis, bronchitis, cough, infections, and even a UTI, or ear infections as well. It is rich in antioxidants, anti-cancers. It improves digestion, metabolism, and absorption of nutrients in the stomach. So when eaten on its own, on its own horseradish can be strong and spicy and may even bring tears to your eyes. Hence why it helps to clear the sinuses. So it's usually eaten sparingly or um, ground up, grated or sliced and was most often consumed as a condiment or in addition to a dip or a, a dip, a dish or as in mashed potatoes, for example, or in an aioli. So next we have leeks. Has anyone here used leeks before in any dish? Yes. Aside from my family. <laughs> My, my, uh, yeah, aside from my sis, who, uh, who has? Oh, by the way, that's nice. So the benefits of eating leeks include protecting your heart health, increasing the strength of the immune system. This is not yet in your notes. Increasing the immune system, helping the nervous system, improving vision, reducing the risk of, of cataracts, helping um, to lower blood pressure, improving digestion, reducing the risk of cancer. So far, I'm sure you're seeing a trend that eating more vegetables reduces your risk of cancer and a lot of inflammatory conditions. It can help to strengthen your bones. It offers protection um, even against sunburn and eating leaves can help improve um, the texture and sheen of your hair. So leeks, even though they look like a scallion on steroids or a beefed up scallion, they're actually very different plants. Um, as for their flavor, they're a cross between a scallion and a garlic. So usually when you're cooking, you chop up scallion, chop up garlic together, saute that, and it smells really amazing. With the scallion, just that alone, it can provide those nice blend of flavors because in the, the, the leeks contain allicin just like the garlic. It can be used as a side dish or in the place of scallion just to replace it. So parsnips. This is one vegetable I'm growing to love, actually, that we've begun incorporating more. Parsnips is a root vegetable native to Eurasia, closely related to carrots and parsley. It grows these beautiful yellow leaves, yellow flowers, that, that are all, um, used to garnish dishes as well. 
In Europe, parsnips were used to sweeten jams and cakes before sugar was readily available, because we know with the whole, um, with the whole slave trade that provided sugar to Europe, before that, um, people used to use vegetables, parsnips to sweeten their dishes, which would be much healthier. So parsnips are rich in folate. They help to improve metabolism in relation to energy and improving the nervous system. They help improve vision. Um, the ascorbic acid and antioxidants can prevent various eye issues, including age-related macular degeneration and protects against um, damage to the eyes. Parsnips help to strengthen the bones. They're rich in manganese, calcium, zinc, um, all sorts of minerals that are involved in resolving skeletal issues uh, like osteoporosis and arthritis. They're anti-cancers, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, and their flavor is starchy, sweet, similar to a carrot. However, the parsnip sweetness is almost spicy like a nutmeg, while the carrot sweetness is reminiscent of a winter squash, kind of like a butternut squash. So... If you're used to using carrots all the time, I would highly suggest that you try parsnips because they're really, they're a nicer, sweeter um, flavor and you can derive the benefits, more benefits from it, from um, adding it to your diet along with carrots. So below to the right, um, it can be used in, with rice or in a vegetable stew made of parsnips, carrots, leeks. The image on the right is actually something that we did um, not too long ago. Um, so it was, excuse me. I made it into a stew with carrots, parsnips, and leeks, and we just had that with rice on the side and vegan sausage. It can be used in, it can be used in a parsnip soup along with cauliflower, which would make a really nice creamy soup or it can be stir fried, it can be, eat, or even eaten raw or baked in a cake. If we, cause we know we make carrot cake, you can make a parsnips cake as well. So number 12, we're gonna speed up here with lotus root. Anyone heard of lotus root before? Nice. Well, lotus root is an edible rhizome, a bulb from the lotus flower. The flower seeds and roots are all edible. It's native to Asia, Australia, New Guinea, and parts of the Middle East. It grows in the shallow, it grows in the mud of shallow ponds and marshes. The lotus flower is actually a really big and beautiful flower, as you see on the right. So lotus root helps increase blood circulation, is good for blood pressure and bleeding disorders. It treats fungal infections, strengthens the immunity, digestion, helps respiratory conditions, and improves digestion. The root is crunchy, slightly sweet, with a little bitterness and reminiscent of a jicama. It has a high water content, making it very refreshing when eaten raw. The flavor is mellow and mild enough that it can be paired with a lot and a lot of different um, dishes, and it will soak up the flavor of anything that you add to it. As for meals, it can be peeled, sliced, eaten raw, or cooked. Incorporated into soups, stir fries, salads, stuffed, or even used as a chip. So, although this vegetable is more common in Asian culture, thankfully it's available year round at most Asian grocery stores. If not fresh or frozen, then you can certainly get it in the form of a chip or even as a tea. So, our last vegetable is the radicchio. Has anyone ever heard of that one or seen it in the stores? Yeah, have you had it before, Emily? I think so. Which one do you, how did you have it? Like in the spring mix? Yes. Yes. Yes, I was just, I was going to bring up, most people have had it but not have realized they've had it. It's a distinct flavor. What do you think of it? Nice. So the radicchio belongs to um, the dandelion or the Asteria, Asteriaceae, I'm, I'm butchering this, Asteriaceae family alongside dandelion and other chicories or endive. Although it looks similar to red or purple cabbage, it has a distinct a bitter or spicy taste which becomes less pungent when cooked. As you can see, it can be eaten raw or it can be um, incorporated into dishes. 
below it's with, um, you can be, it can be used in lasagna, a smoked tofu lasagna, and a salad or um, used in place of lettuce and a burger. So much of the radicchio eaten around the world is usually um, imported and it's more popular in Italian dishes as well. So, I hope um, that these, these vegetables and all may inspire you to include more diversity in your diet going forward and that in doing so, you may be found in better health. Let us close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we've had to go over our health portion. We ask that you may please help us to be more creative with our foods, that we may include more diversity into what we eat on a day-to-day -day basis, that we may be more inspired to use more vegetables, fruits, nuts, and grains, and not only to stick to the things that we know, but to look deeper, and as we should into your word, help us to look deeper into the foods that you have given us to nourish our bodies um, at, the at the same time. Help us, Lord, to, to, um, to put aside our, to put aside our haphazardness in, in doing so, and that you may help us to um, be in better health. In Jesus' name we do pray.